Thank you for joining us today on Rare Disease Day. I'm the former founding executive director of the Myotonic Dystrophy Foundation, and I'm also a mother. Myotonic dystrophy is a rare disease. One in 2,100 people in the world have this disease. What's even more rare is the congenital form of myotonic dystrophy. And that's what we're here to talk about today. My name is Lisa and I have myotonic dystrophy. This is my daughter, Kayla, and she was born with congenital myotonic dystrophy. She passed away at the age of 13 due to heart complications. We are rare. Hi, I am Chelsea. I have myotonic oh. dystrophy, and this is Waylon, and he has congenital myotonic dystrophy, and he is four, and we are rare. Hi, I'm Zoe. I have congenital myotonic dystrophy, and I'm 15 years old. Hi, I'm Sarah. I have myotonic dystrophy. We are, we are rare. My name is Cecilia, and this is my 22-year-old grandson with congenital myotonic dystrophy. Can you say your name? Matthew. Matthew. And we are rare. Hi, my name is Laka. I have myotonic dystrophy. This is my son, Brayden. He's three. He has congenital myotonic dystrophy, and we are rare. Uh, I'm Chris, and I'm Chelsea's father and Wayland's grandfather, and um, we have myotonic dystrophy, Wayland's congenital. Chelsea and I are probably adult onset. Um, we are, we, we are, are rare. Yes. <gasps> There's me again. Mm -hmm. I'm Leah. I'm 36. I have myotonic dystrophy. This is Patience, my daughter. She is 12, and she has congenital myotonic dystrophy. And this is my dad, Jeff. We are rare. We are rare. We are rare. We are rare. We are We are Cure Dear, a charity in the UK supporting families living with myotonic dystrophy. We are rare. My name is Liam. My name is Bailey. This is Louis. Louis has congenital myotonic dystrophy. He is rare. We've got myotonic dystrophy and we are rare. This is Bradley. He had myotonic dystrophy. Passed away age eight. He is rare. My name is Rosie and I have myotonic dystrophy. We are rare. My name is John Day and I'm a professor of neurology and director of the neuromuscular program at Stanford. And I'm very excited to be here to increase awareness about Rare Disease Day. Rare diseases are rare. By definition, each disease does not affect very many people. But in composite, a number of people, millions of people are affected by one rare disease or another. And each rare disease can teach us something absolutely critical about biology, about human nature, about human disease, about any number of things that become crystal clear because of that one disease. One form of rare disease that I have spent almost 40 years studying is myotonic dystrophy. It's a dominantly inherited, meaning it affects multiple generations in a single family, but to a very different, differing degree. Some patients, some individuals in a family are more affected and some less, but the more severe form, the most severe form is congenital myotonic dystrophy, which affects probably on the order of about one in 40,000 people. Uh, at birth. So about one in, in every 40,000 births in the United States and largely across the world is affected by congenital myotonic dystrophy. By studying that disease, we are learning incredible new things about how the brain works and how the body works and how one particular genetic change can cause so much havoc and so, much, so many problems. Excitingly, we think we're very close to being able to treat myotonic dystrophy. We understand the genetics, we understand how the genetic 
uh, we understand how the genetic change is causing disease. And now we think we have a, a way and probably multiple ways to control that underlying disease process. I'm tremendously excited to see where this goes for congenital myotonic dystrophy. I'm eager to see if we can't stop and control that disease and hopefully reverse many of the features of that disease and how it affects infants in one in 40,000 births. But that will also teach us a lot about various kinds of, of uh, inherited and sporadic disorders of the brain and central nervous system, as well as of muscle function and any number of other things. So rare disease day is a tremendously important day. It makes us all aware of what's going on in this space and what we need to do to learn from each of these rare diseases. I'm, ex I'm excited to see where we can go in understanding congenital myotonic dystrophy better and how that's going to improve the lot of humanity worldwide. Hi, I'm Jacinda Sampson. I'm a neurologist and a neurogeneticist at Stanford University. And I take care of people with rare diseases in my clinic. Um, I first started working uh, with patients with myotonic dystrophy when I was a fellow, uh, particularly people with the congenital form, which uh, starts at birth. And I, as a, a, a learning neurogeneticist, was fascinated by uh, the genetics of the disorder and how it affects phenotype. And phenotype is how uh, your genes manifest in reality, what type of symptoms and, and features you have due to your genetics. And in myotonic dystrophy, uh, this genetic disorder affects how the RNA or the messages that code for protein get cut and pasted, which is called splicing in order to make proteins. And because it affects this very fundamental part of your genetic machinery, it affects a lot of different genes and proteins and pathways. And so uh, in real life, what happens is that it affects a lot of different systems in your body. It can affect your brain, um, sleep, uh, your muscles, muscles of breathing, swallowing, your heart muscle. Um, it can affect your endocrine system with diabetes, even your skin and your hair, uh, and often also your gastrointestinal tract and your eyes. So you may, hearing that list, think that there's not a single system that was missed. Uh, and it does affect a lot of different systems of the body. And from this, we are learning a lot about general biology as well as myotonic dystrophy. But I think the reason why all these years later, I'm still working on myotonic dystrophy is that um, people of myotonic dystrophy are people with myotonic dystrophy and they have their own personality and they have humor, they have joy, they have kindness and they have an amazing persistence of life that despite all of these changes in their biological pathways, um, they live rich and full and active lives. Their children, their adults, they might be friends or family or neighbors of yours and you don't know. If you don't know someone with this rare disease, you might know someone with a rare disease. And it's because these are people, people with diseases that give them handicaps and limitations and difficulties and are struggling to overcome them um, I want to raise awareness about rare diseases. And so this is why I care about rare. Hi, my name is Cynthia Gagnon. I'm an occupational therapist by background, and I'm also a researcher in the province of Quebec, Canada, more specifically in the region of Saguenay-Lac-Saint-Jean where there is the highest prevalence of myotonic dystrophy worldwide. I started to learn more about myotonic dystrophy in, during my doctoral study, and I just fall in love with the people that I was seeing. And for so many reasons, I thought that this was a perfect fit to have a researcher in occupational therapy trying to help the family affected by this disease. And I'll tell you why it is so important to 
understand myotonic dystrophy, not only because of their signs and symptoms, you've heard probably that they have several system affected, they, have, uh, they may have problem with their cognitive function, with their mu muscle strength, with their ability to walk, with their gastrointestinal symptoms. But more importantly, those symptoms will have very strong impact on their daily activity, like brushing their teeth, eating, going, doing their errands, but they will also have impact on their social role, like being able to go to school, having a boyfriend, funding, f making, having a family. So they have a, a lot of impact on their ability to, it may have a lot of impact on their ability to go to school, to have a boyfriend, to start working or to live independently. And that's where an occupational therapist can help. And that's where an occupational therapist can help in also not only understanding the impact of the disease from a sign and symptom perspective, but also by shaping or changing the environment to help that person to reach its full potential. And that's where I think that uh, we need to move forward even more in that rare disease day to support those families with social program, with a more uh, inclusive design to make sure that each individual with that disease can reach its full potential. Thank you and have an amazing rare disease day. Hi, and happy rare disease day. I'm Tanya Stevenson, the CEO of the Myotonic Dystrophy Foundation. On Rare Disease Day, we celebrate being rare and work to raise awareness about the disease that affects as many as one in 2,100 people around the world. Most don't know they are affected and many have been misdiagnosed, sometimes for decades. Together, we're gonna to change that. Today on Rare Disease Day, I ask you to do just a few things to work towards that change. One, Share with your friends, your family, your colleagues about myotonic dystrophy to raise awareness about the disease. Share about your experiences to help people understand this is one of the most variable diseases in the world. It affects every body system, it's progressive. And we're in desperate need of more research so we can find treatments and a cure. Number two, today pledge to talk with your policymakers about increasing funding for research on myotonic dystrophy. If you need pointers or talking points, contact the foundation, we're happy to help. Number three, sign up to participate in research. We will not find treatments or a cure unless we eliminate barriers to drug development. And that means our brave and courageous people living with myotonic dystrophy must step forward so we can participate in research studies and learn as much as possible about how to develop future treatments. Number four, join the Myotonic Dystrophy Family Registry if you haven't already, and you'll learn more about the studies and trials that are coming up. And as we get closer to, rare, to International Myotonic Dystrophy Awareness Day, ask your local communities to light their landmarks and monuments up in green to help raise awareness on September 15th. But perhaps most importantly, be a self-advocate. Take good care of yourself. See your doctor. Don't ignore new progressing symptoms. Schedule your annual heart assessment. Share the myotonic dystrophy clinical care guidelines with your doctors and be kind to yourself. You can access resources and information and support at myotonic.org. Thank you all and happy rare disease day. <laughs>